Okay, so let's, let's talk a little, a little bit about your background and, and the vision as well, so I'm sure everyone would like to know that. So, story time, Matt, um, you know, give us a little bit about your, your background uh, and your previous experience and, and history uh, and how you got to this point. Yeah, sure. Um, so, well, I've always been into tech and starting tech businesses, um, even down to a kid, you know, I was 14 and selling software and computers through magazines before the internet was around. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've always run tech and software companies. Um, but my last company that I ran was called C4L, and it was a data center and cloud company. It started back in 2000, so it's kind of before you had Amazon and Azure or any of these cloud platforms that are out there. Um, and basically, we kind of automated businesses getting on the internet. So we provided data center space, network capacity, um, and connected them up to multiple sites. So you've got the redundancy that you have in cloud, but we kind of did it all manually before all this was automated. Um, and that, that grew well. You know, we ended up in about 55 data centers. Um, global backbone uh, provided about 1% of the UK's infrastructure. So that kind of gave us a lot of experience in building big, scalable cloud infrastructure platforms. Um, and you know, that, that's where we, we know how to kind of build huge infrastructure. And what, what, what year did you, you sell that company? So I sold that in 2016. Um, and the idea of selling that business um, was we, you know, building infrastructure takes time. Mm -hmm. You've got to build on other people's uh, networks. You've got to build your own data centers and cloud platforms. Um, and yeah, it, it kind of, the technology got to the right point then that actually we could build in software what we'd previously managed to do in hardware. Okay. Excellent. So, th so the idea then, so your, your uh, previous company, C4L, uh, is a you know, data center cloud infrastructure. So the, uh, I mean, the idea for Kudo was, was the original idea. Did that come from C4L? Was there a problem you saw? Um, it, it went back to about 2011. Um, and, you know, we were providing huge amounts of capacity to millions of end users. Uh, and we were just so seeing huge amounts of waste, you know. Um, so, uh, consumer networks, we were providing backbone capacity, you've got your dead time between kind of your evenings, um, but actually consumer networks is dead time during the day and when they're asleep. Uh, business networks, it's the other way around, you've got uh, evenings and weekends, it's all dead time. Um, then you've got service providers, uh, they kind of follow a, a sine wave that goes through the day and capacity, but you can never fill those gaps with contracted workloads very easily. So you've got anything up to kind of sometimes up to 80% waste in these capacities, um, usually about 30 to 50% waste. And then um, backbone providers as well follows exactly the same pattern, um, but it's really difficult to try and fill that spare capacity. And backbone providers can have anything up to 95% spare capacity. So, you know, we, we realized actually we can, if we can build in software, a platform that makes use of all this spare capacity out there, mm -hmm. It means that rather than all the revenue of cloud services going yeah. purely to the top handful of yeah. hyperscalers, actually we can start to distribute that revenue and use that to everybody. Um, we can, it's much greener because you don't have to keep building brand new data centers and server farms. And you can just make use of all the infrastructure that's already there. So everyone benefits, planet and people. Okay. So I think, I, think, I mean, you've, you've touched on the solution there and uh, the basis for Kudo and sustainable computing or making better use of the world's computing power because you know, presumably as a software provider the world is now the market rather than just the UK. Yeah. Fantastic. So, so give us a kind of uh, a quick overview of the, of the vision. What's the, what's the big picture? Um, so ultimately, which is a big picture, is you know, we want to make use of the world's spare compute capacity rather than keep building data centers and server farms to fulfill it. But you have to do that in steps and it's a kind of a stepping stone process that if you get past that barrier, then you can move to that barrier to that barrier. So that's what we've been working on. And you know, what we want to do is make better use of hardware, stop using up CO2 and build a new server farms and data centers, um, bring the revenue back to the people. So give you an idea, like a games machine, for example, at someone's house, that could earn anything from 50 to a few hundred dollars a month, which is a lot of money to an end user, because they've, and, but they've already spent that money. So you know, it's right that you can get a return on it. And you know, by using this for cloud, uh, what we're now doing is we're working on providing those exact same services to blockchain because we're seeing the same issues in blockchain that we've seen in traditional cloud. 
Um, so traditional cloud, you know, you need to be able to scale um, globally, which is the platform that we've been building, you know, for the last few years. Um, but what you're seeing in blockchain is blockchains, um, they're immutable. And the issue with uh, the immutability is how much connectivity you can have to the outside world. So by using the network that we've been building, that means that we can all of a sudden connect it. These different blockchains that are limited in what they can do, you can connect it to the outside world, you can run compute in smart contracts massively more cost effectively, you can run Turing complete solutions for other networks, um, and really it kind of brings you to the next stage of what's possible with blockchain. Fantastic. Okay, it sounds it sounds great. So, so every computer in the world is potentially a supplier to the Kudo network. Yeah, exactly. So we've got um, for more advanced machines, which could be dedicated games machines. It could be a spare server in a data center. Then we run um, the compute workloads inside a virtual environment, um, which can be a virtual machine or a Docker environment, um, and that enables us to take anything that sits in cloud today down to those devices. Whereas if we're running blockchain workloads, we run that inside WebAssembly, and WebAssembly enables us to uh, compile it down, make it very efficient, and actually run it on anything, even down to like a Raspberry Pi. So it enables every device out there to be able to run any type of um, compute workload. Brilliant. Okay, sounds like a big job. So in the next video, let's talk about um, you know, where, where Kudo is now and the, and the progress we've made so far. Okay.